topic is profitable in the market. So with respect to this, uh, first of all, we need to understand why dairy farming can be profitable in the right now. So to understand that, we need to understand demand uh, for milk, milk, milk products and all. So see the situation where population is increasing with an alarm rate and uh, and milk is such a product wherein everyone requires it irrespective of age factor and not just uh, for uh, for food, even for sweet dishes or occasions many occasions you know uh, milk is majorly required and uh, in the current scenario where milk is adulterated with all chemicals and all you could imagine there are a lot knows is that 70 percent of the milk that is sold in the market especially metro is are all itum adulterated Adulterated not just with water because when it comes to adulteration, there is a scenario where water in milk is also, is also, also an adulteration, but it is not so. So, milk is prepared out of many chemicals, wherein milk is not at all taken from our blood now. So, in this scenario, uh, if we are able to give a quality milk and educate the customer regarding milk and adulterated milk, uh, we can identify our they should recognize it, the importance of it, the effects of chemical milk. All those things, if you can educate them, definitely there will be a huge demand for milk and products. So milk can be made into many products, which on a daily food or for occasions it is being consumed. So popular and on the other side, even infants' population is also decreasing. There is government statistics that population of milk animals is being increasing since last few uh, what you call that uh, <coughs> census. But when you go to villages and talk to people, farmers and all, we also realize that the animal population is decreased, decreased to a greater extent. When you say, well, you ask native farmers in rural area, you can say, if you ask them, like, uh, how is the animal's population situation like the earlier to this and all? Everyone says, no, no, earlier there were many animals, right now only few animals, the population is decreased now. But statistics, government statistics, census and all, it shows it is increasing. We don't know where, what went wrong or how our understanding is wrong. So we need to think on that. But more than that, so one, uh, this first, like we need to be clear about that, there are population increasing, health for demand for milk is increasing. And only thing we need to convince the importance of healthy milk is consumers. So second is when it comes to now, we see why it's important, like once it, we decided, yes, what are the traits that we have to have? Because when it comes to many people come to dairy farming, uh, dairy experts or animal scientists and all, they say we want to start a dairy. If you ask like, how it can be managed, why you want to do that and all, they say, oh, it's like we want to do some business and the dairy farming. <laughs> okay. So dairy farming can be a good business. So and when they how we do what so people say that we have money and we'll have our uh, labor to do that, we'll pay extra money. They will have their own perception of the farming labor that they if they pay money, more people will be ready to work. So in that perception, without knowing the uh, strength, weakness, and opportunities and threat of dairy industry, dairy animal rare, they get into dairy farming just because they feel that there must be a money when it's demand. No, it's not just like that, but we need an attitude to dairy farming. So we, it's not that the workers work, we need, also need to work. So if you observe any of the biggest uh, built up enterprises, when they were small, they also work like laborers and now they, they are in uh, current positions, whatever, wherever they are. So it's similar to that when it comes to dairy, on a single day it cannot be built. So we need to be ready, not just milking, even to remove cow dung or the dung, urine and all, we need to clean that. Then we need to wash the animal, we need to see that the situation is there. So all that, just not the labor, we also need to do that. So that's what, so for, for that, to SWOT analysis is necessary, SWOT when it comes to SWOT analysis. So strength, we need to understand that strength of us. So that if you have that strength of dealing with animals, waking up at early morning, five o'clock, four o'clock, whenever is required, because we don't know when it comes. So we may work only for few hours, but that few hours is not defined. In case of offices, it is different like 9 to 5, 10 to 4, except night shift and all. But in dairy, no. It's not just time is defined. It may be less, but it is not flexible. Even sometimes at 12 o'clock, the time may come where you need to take animals for doctor or doctor to animal shed and all. So, it not, so time first, we cannot say that it's 12 o'clock morning, we will go to the hospital. Or something. So we must have 
that attitude the towards rearing this starting there is so once we decide it we need to to selection of the animal so unless we have that attitude or towards working is labor along with being a owner we should not get to dairy farm so next is if once we decided we will go with it we will start with selection of animal so selection of animal for dairy we have different options like we have one is buffalo second is cow and even we have even donkey milk is also sold in the market right now with a good this uh, one so there are few people who have been successful in donkey milk so only thing we there's a niche market where we need to catch up that market if we want to start along with this now the two popularly run animals are like cow and buffalo when it comes to buffalo there are it, it has their its own advantages and disadvantages when it comes to cow it has its own disadvantages and when it comes to cow again we have two breeds one is indigenous breed and second is exotic exotic refers to hf for jersey which are being imported from other countries mm, for milk purposes and another like uh, local animals like indigenous animals maybe from local breeds across like we have our devani kilari number area if you go to malnad area malnad region in karnataka kilari amrutmal gir in gujarat so kakrej in assam uh, rajasthan so this n number of breeds are there so at least that to just identify breeds which you can choose based on your locality so now you may now when it comes to now three we have exotic breed indigenous breed and buffalo why to choose which one to choose right so buffalo is the milk fat is good so if you want to prepare more products of milk products out of milk and you want to make ghee or whatever kind of thing so sweets then buffalo milk would be good because people prefer buffalo milk because of fat content. so when the, it has its own advantages advantages from the point of health and all but still people prefer it so it's based on if the situation is there we start with it. but when the problem with buffalo will we for every 10 15 animals we should have a what you call breeding buffalo so in case of male male buffalo uh, so why because so in case in art it is natural uh, that i where uh, it will not be identifiable in case of buffalo so it's a kannada mook be there silent uh, this one it is called so in that case we need to have a male animal in chat if you want to have buffalo that's the only disadvantage is we have otherwise it's good and management of buffalo will come to the later so when next top option is cow so when it comes to cow exotic or indian it all your choice so now exotic and uh, exotic breeds people prefer because of high milk breed and all but still there are few people or some people who are good successfully running a chap and jersey but majority of them are failed because of their success uh, and some of them are successful and some farmers rearing one or two animals are successful at least in our area is the north left to kolar and all their people are successful in gulbarga where i am saying with the situation and when it comes to indigenous spread devani and all also be good yield milk when we have a we need to select the best animal but one thing is here is milk quality quantity may be lesser than the exotic breeds but the worth of it is more people are selling it 100 rupees liter 75 rupees liter and all so it's only thing quality quantity may be reduced but quality is very high so we can get into this dairy also so along with this dairy when you start with this breed there are other advantages like we have wet quality cow dung and cowery and milk or ghee is also for it very premium price so in that way we need to think of so now you chose buffalo or cow dung or cow desi cow or exotic breed based on our requirement so now how to manage them so how to get more out of it in this so if you have buffalo as a rearing so we we need to understand some one technique wherein we need to allow animals to sit in water at least for 3 4 hours so every sitting of 3 to 4 hours we need 1 liter of milk in case, in case of buffalo so under if you have don't have a farm pond nearby or if you cannot arrange animal to sit in water for some time in the day time it, we, we are losing 1 liter of uh, milk so on a daily basis so in that case we need to have a uh, Management uh, system. One second. Okay. So we need to be aware of that. So uh, having a buffalo, uh, how to manage? And when it comes to uh, this indigenous cow, 
it's very easy to manage like we can take it for grazing and all and in the evening we can feed some artificial feed that's also a good idea unless we go for grazing of uh, this indigenous cow it's quite difficult because water cost will be very like high and in case of animals uh, cow dairy 90 to 90 percent of the cost will be on feed and fodder so which if you can reduce feeds more profit so selection like when it comes to exotic breed again we need to have a green fodder or land for that water for that to grow green fodder and all so again it's too tedious so we have buffalo cow and uh, exotic breed of cow which you can choose based on our requirement whatever you want to choose like in the buffalo or cow and all selection of uh, animal so now we need to choose how what qualities we need to look for so usually when you are practicing in local dairy farmers experience in market selling and buying we can take their help for buying them. and while buying we should not buy boy then at the time so that we at least one will pay otherwise we should be open for market in the market go and search of market just to find best animals and only when we find a animal good animal we need to buy it so for that we need to have a good market knowledge to to avoid to go into different markets and all see that how animals are put on and usually traditional people are their experienced farmers more uh, resourceful in this rather than any scientific thoughts or scientific knowledge on this but still then you can look into order and by touching the order if we buy animal doesn't do anything it is silent and is good eating usually those animals which are having this give this milk are very arrogant and which gives good milk they are very soft in nature so that the soft animals are preferred and next comes fodder management when it comes to fodder management is the highest cost that we are incurring in the for the animal so to 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 reduce the cost we need to understand that every five five acres of land will be able to so one acre of land will be able to feed five to six animals so if we want to start 10 animals at least two acres of land we should have for grazing 15 3 acres so that ratio it should go and along with this we need to see that uh, the what you call the fodder content that we need to grow if we have one acre of land we should divide it to four parts wherein uh, four parts is again uh, is sown with the different seeds like one is one part will be annual uh, cereal like cereal refers to jowar maize and all so annual means it, it is cut one time and it's over so if you take up maize it 45 days the crop is over and we'll be feeding it so next again we need to sow that's called annual so out of 100% 25% of land will be for uh, annual cereals and next annual 20, 25% will be for and by perennial cereals perennial cereals refers to your napier grass uh, and the quinoa grass and all or even multicut sorghum where in once you sow it or once you plant it so for 5 6 years 10 years it will be available so multicut uh, cereal second comes uh, third comes the annual pulse, pulses so pulses refers to those uh, which are rich in proteins so they are uh, used uh, when you split the seed it is parted into two parts like the red gram green gram and all so there are many annual uh, few annual uh, grass uh, pulse uh, dicot grasses which you can be fed to animals so that part also should be covered 25% and remaining next 25% will be for perennial uh, pulses so like uh, dance and all which can be taken for perennial so in that case this uh, is can be done so this is four parts along with this one on the border and in between them you can go for perennial plants plant for like subabul is there mulberry is there so which you can plant across in between these four plots or on the border so that it helps us to sustain the reform during the odd seasons also so this uh, annual uh, cereals and pulses along with this uh, plant species will be a good resource uh, for the as a fodder for the animals so which you can cost can be reduced in a lot way along with this you need to purchase some concentrated feed or that also can be grown whenever like so jowar or sowing along with this can grow green gram or black gram which can be stated uh, made at a time to fed to animals wherein it is saving on the cost so we need to see that most of the fodder in the form for the animals should be prepared should be grown in the form that's the secret of dairy farming success so fodder and grazing so prepare animals for those animals like buffalo or indigenous cow grazing can be taken so if you take for grazing that's a good idea 
so you can even while grazing you should don't allow them to just graze on the land, on the land. along with that you can cut some plants which are available in that area and allow, make see that plant in must get it as fodder like even plant even, even neem also so neem plant is also eaten by this animals over the floor so in that sense uh, we need to allow them we need to cut them and give it to animals so that uh, you uh, pressure on land for cultivation of green gra green grasses is reduced along with the second is pruning of the plant is also done which is advantageous in the case of farming so fodder is there so next comes shed shed construction there are many scientific methods of shed constructions like uh, uh, tail to tail head to head and it should be tied in side east west direction so animal face is north or east or west direction so in that case we need to see that how the shed so tail to tail head to head is all your advantages and disadvantages both have their own advantages and disadvantages so like in tail to tail cleaning is easy in head to head feeding is easy in tail to tail cleaning is the uh, feeding is difficult because you need to wait walk two times in in case of head to head uh, feeding uh, in tail to tail cleaning will be easy and feeding will be twice so in that the tail to tail refers to the one the two animals are tied in two rows so one the tail of the one animal faces the tail of the other animal so that's called head to head tail to tail and similarly head of the one animal faces the head of the other animal which is facing is opposite uh, the row so that's tail head to head there are many photos uh, we can pull it out and find that uh, idea or pictures and so we need to see that uh, uh, air flow movement and all is very good uh, because if we have rooftop is at a ground level in the lower level it's also high enough and if you take it very high for air ventilation and all it's also tough because there is chances of that uh, during harm during wind and so shed construction see that uh, it's, it's convenient for you to feed the animals they clean it see that uh, urine goes to at one point to make it a slope and all see that animals are uh, the roof the floor is very uh, not very soft it's hard Uh, so that animals don't slip and all. So if they slip, means we lost them. So we need to say that uh, slip, slipping is not uh, possible in, uh, and should not be avoided. Along with this, care should be taken that animal is fed good water. So what? It's not just good water. All uh, timely water should be made. So uh, we cannot. We can speak and we can, we can drink any time water. Like three o'clock, I need water. I can take in between this class if I want to take. I can take and if you want, you also. Can. But animals is not so. These are cold animals. They are given me water during the daytime once leaving the home, and when they come back again, the after the bit time, if the water is available nearby, they are taken for water drinking. But uh, there are some methods wherein the animal can drink whenever it wants. In that way, constructions sheds are constructed, and so it is a small wall, wall, and all. So so that animals are take water whenever they want. So in that case, some methods are allowed. Some small techniques are available, wherein uh, the animal can drink. It's an innovative idea by a farmer here in Gulbarga, wherein uh, he saw that water is available to the cow any time, and there is no again water putting water to that pot whenever the animal drinks. So some wall wall arrangement was made, and animal whenever drinks the water, it was available to all again the water level that cup is to increase. So small mechanization, it was very good idea. So that helps the animal to be happy. So so that helps the animal to be happy, and it can take water in it. So that was one thing. You can see that some electricity is also available, and in some cases where paddy growing area are there, where mosquito population is very high, see that the animal is your this what you call mosquito net is used along with for the animals for the safety of animals. Otherwise, more mosquito is being paddy growing areas at all. Use mosquito population that. Use the animal regulation, and again here we need to see that the ethics of the labor is also important. So we need to treat labor as very well. It's not that the money he works, he also works for prestige. He also works as a dignity. He also has some pay, name and all. So we need to do have do respect to that so that he, he works for us long term. Otherwise, it's quite difficult uh, to what to say uh, for manage in the farm. If, uh, Labor is not ethical. So ethics, how we may treat is like we may if the animal is feeding uh, five or six liters, giving five six liters in the milk every day. Suddenly, we milk only three to four liters and say milk is only that much. 
we cannot have a test where in order is empty or not so that's one thing so we need to see that animal people are happy happy they are they not be just with money we along with there are many things which a human relationship are more important in the labor and the owner so those things you cannot be taught scientifically but they are managed and it's a individual learning skill how to manage people and uh, along with the animal this labor turnover we need to see it is very very low so it has to be fed to very healthy food during the morning and evening so even the milking you see now every every day we milk the animal twice a day but in professional man professionally managed there is they take up the milk three times so if, because every eight eight hours the udder is full so ninth and tenth hour the udder, there is no milk production in any case so in that case if we have again the milk it uh, and allow it for the animals for again eight hours again it uh, uh, accumulates the milk so that the animal cow or buffalo he gets if you good use good milk and we also get harvest to harvest to good milk good quantity of milk and quality milk so it like three every eight hours we need to milk so suppose morning 4 o'clock you have made a time 12 in the evening and 8 in the evening so that would be a good optimum time to everyone anyone to milk for four, every eight hours once eight hours. so those things we need to understand not just professionalism as it manner there is even if you have a simple two and or three and you can try this off Six hours, once in eight hours milking. So water, electricity, feed, water. Importance of taking animals for grazing also very important because animals by birth they know what maybe what feed, what water, what grasses they should take for what decision of. So now if this if we allow them to graze, we can have a very good relationship between cow and the cow plant, wherein farmer will also be able to get the benefit. But along with this, the dairy animal, the animal can eat whatever it wants. So now, if it's feeling hungry, if it's feeling some stomach problem, and all, it can take xanthan dopilin, the curry cane in Canada. So yeah, that grass, so which it can have a relief for. So there are many such plants. Even the animal prefer neem leaves also. A neem leaves can be made into five kg or two kg and given to farmers so that they can take it or even some. Uh, one can manage. Hope I'm on the track. So now, feed uh, and all. So calf management. So milking three to four, three times is good. Next is calf management. Calf management when the small animals. If you today's calves are tomorrow's good animals. So we need to feed, give good milk to them along with, uh, from the cow. So out of three, one should be allowed to for this calf. That's a good idea. Along with that, the uh, feeding these calves also with the uh, nutritious food for that will also add value. So that the whatever loss the calf makes from the milk of the, the milk from the cow, it's a uh, mother. So we can feed it through artificial feed like whatever tuna and uh, what you call that. Mm. Okay. So then uh, this is calf management again. The pregnancy management of the animals is also important. I don't know what it's called in English or not. So what we need to say that the animal give birth today, we next after three to three after three months and within four months we need to say that again it is inseminated or give, taken before a, and it's conceived. So because the after if you if it conceives at fourth month, next eight ninth month again it will be ready for delivery next cow and in between four months unconceived part life of the cow and again four to five months during conceived period they will give milk. And when it is again four months for delivering it, so we should not take milk from the point of health of the animal, um, sorry, calf inside. So when it, if we stop milk, taking milk the, during the last four months, it is a good idea that we don't take the milk. And uh, that inside the womb, when the calf is there, it gets a quality milk from its cow mother. So fourth month we should make an insemination or it's, it's three that it consumed and again after four months or five months we should stop taking milk from that cow and uh, in some dairies you see where music helps the animal to be very pleasant and also give good quality of milk especially flute of the uh, flute is very good flute music so those kind of things people can experiment on and see that they get more profit from the dairy farm so another five minutes, we'll talk on milk process. So now it's to take care of the calf, animal, feed, water, shed, water, electricity, and labor, part of the labor. 
on diseases so now we should have a contact with few doctors nearby so whom we can approach uh, for uh, you know, what you call uh, animal uh, in a case of uh, any emergency we can approach a veterinary doctor and but along with this now new, we are trying on ethno veterinary practices wherein they can use some books and references for diseases and the major one is lumpy skin disease which we are, we are able to see now uh, it was cured by a doctor in ayurvedic method uh, we got an help from dr murthy sarji from madurai to treat on this so it was it worked in many areas uh, so for this one thing we are mentioning but along with this many diseases we are able to take the uh, so help from ethno veterinary practices uh, so we could say so for that is not having an animal and taking the animal to a veterinary doctor any time our health so once we want to start it we should learn some things basic diseases basic methods of taking it basic uh, disease management practices feed and water all <laughs> Uh, should be learn, we should learn it and should have, we can have a chart kind of thing and be displayed on the chart so that we can remember it can easily so some learning skill has to happen in this so this is this is my name. now again next coming is milk processing plant so now selling milk is one idea where it's a very tedious job because a day on a day to day basis we have to go so for which we have found a simple method giving that milk to dairy amf or whatever like organized cooperative center so wherein it will not be profitable to sell the milk at 30 to 50 rupees or 28 to be some kind of thing based on the fat and the stuff so along with this if you start selling direct it will be more profitable because direct milk uh, sellers sell the milk at 60 70 rupees even if you take 10 10 rupees per liter for transportation or it will be under more profit along with this it's a source of uh, job for you people who want to start a dairy farm so selling is a skill and we need to learn everyone is good at it only thing we need to Uh, stop hesitating it we should that ignore that like we should not see that we are salesmen and all so be proud to be your salesman when you sell your own products that milk and products so selling milk is one option but it's a very tough job because on a daily basis we need to go to customer every day we need to deliver them so sometimes people complain that water and all so then still we need to be in but along with this you can process the milk into butter milk and butter and butter from that butter we can make ghee and all so we convert the ghee from a essential like less perishable product to more non perishable product so perishable product is milk and non perishable is ghee because it takes a longer time for the perishable ghee so we we, we get a, we get more time to sell it and again one liter selling on a daily basis one kg ghee selling on a monthly basis second option is easy for us to practice so we need to learn the processing part it's not ghee and butter butter milk or butter and all there are n number of products like barfi gunda um is many products that can be made out of it and even there are some traditional things which can be taken as a food like tatrasar and, and your panchagavya which can be made out of that cow dung and sorry cow dung the urine along with cow milk and curd so we need to understand there are a number of properties uh, to process the milk and sell so when you process you can get a very few customers to sell all of your product if you sell only the milk we need to have a large number of customers for your for small quantity of milk so reaching more people is easy can sell milk but if it's tough job to more to reach more people so small, less number of participants uh, less number of customers would be easy to sell them so with that note so so dairy is always a cocktail and price only thing we should have a right attitude towards it so it's not that job like where in some i was sitting somewhere and uh, people will be uh, taking care of their cows and all get a good milk and make a profit no along with neighbors we need to be in the shed near by shed near by cow and at least on daily basis or so we see we should have a build up relationship with the cow and whatever animal we are rearing uh, and so that will uh, make a dairy successful so questions can be taken if there are any questions uh, otherwise the only thing we need to understand somewhere in between the thumb rule is if you buy an animal today next 3 uh, years first year the animal cost will be free second year the profit from second year profit to revenue will be the cost of the uh, feeding for 3 years uh, and third year the profit will be low. by example is hypothetical example if you buy an animal for 300 rupees first year will recover 300 by selling its milk and milk products so it's a cost of milk so 300 rupees the yearly 100 rupees is the expenses for feeding and all 
So for three years, it will be 300. So 300, we can recover by selling the milk and milk products from the second year. So third year, whatever we are selling milk and milk products, we get 300 rupees, get the revenue or profit for these three years. So in that case, we need to understand. So we need to see that if we start dairy, uh, dairy animal only if you are comfortable and physically, mentally fit to do the dairy for at least for five to six years. It's not just today we bring the animals, tomorrow we don't make money and tomorrow we sell the animals. No, that's not the way. So in that case, uh, we need to see that uh, we uh, plan for a longer term. Along with this, uh, this long term, we also need to understand that we are uh, on the selling of uh, the, 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 what I said, conceiving and all. We need to see that the conceiving happens immediately after four, before four months of the delivery. So that three years we can get the milk from that. Otherwise, what happens? We get the milk only on the latest, like for there, there are instances where in today milk they deliver the calf and the next nine months they take the milk. After eight or nine months of milk stops milking, then we go for conceiving. One thing the animal will be under problem, it will not be able to uh, conceive. And also, or else, if it conceives, will be losing. It even conceives, will be losing a period of nine months again. So time is very precious in case of dairy animal. And one problem with dairy, like when I said, sort and reason. When weakness of this dairy industry is irrespective of whatever the program, whatever the functions, whatever the bad things put in the animal in the house, we need to be with animal. Someone need to take care of this animal. So for that, we need to have a BEQ model balance of equilibrium or the so that what economical order quantity, whatever you say. So in that case, starting with one animal is also tough. Having 100 animals is also tough. So if you have an optimum number is 5 to 10 animals for the first time, along with one or two labors. And once you want to increase two labor, you can take it to 15 animals. So seven, seven animals can be raised and one seven by standby. So balance of equilibrium also we need to look into in this case. So with, uh, with this note, I will be concluding my talk. If any doubts, answer any questions, we can answer. Thank you, Mr. Mallinath, for a very nice talk. So I'll now take up some questions. Uh, participants, first I'll ask some questions, then uh, I'll come back to you, uh, the participants in Zoom. OK, so the first question is, What are some profitable dairy projects that can be started with less than 10 lakhs investment? 10 lakh would be a good investment because if, if you get an animal like 30,000, 40,000, uh, go with cow and all, if you go with uh, exotic breeds, 50,000, 70,000, in case of a polar bear, 70,000, uh, 10 animals, uh, we can have definitely like 6 to 7 lakh. So, 1 and a half, 2 lakh for the animal. And remaining uh, shed construction and all it will do. So eight animals of the optimum number with this uh, ten lakh project in case of exotic and buffalo. And if you are going for an indigenous breed, even ten people can also be very right number uh, to start up with. And uh, with the economically a viable project can be done. With it. Okay, uh, Mr. Manivath, can you please on the camera so that uh, we can see your video? Yeah, we can see you now. Thank you. Uh, what are some uh, successful projects you have helped to set up? Oh, it's tough. tough. Let's see, as a dairy expert, like there are few people who have done it, uh, but not in because I'm not a professional consultant for dairy and all. But we are we are we are in a dairy this one, and there are few people whom we because I cannot take the credit of I have I have done that. Only thing they ask questions and you answer them what the problem is, like whenever they get a disease or some labor problem, or if they are not able to make sell the products and all. And so, whenever they are not able to approach the bank in the project report and all, we could have written a project report. And all. Those part of the entire project were done, I, I cannot take the credit that I have done this project. So, because I'm not, the, I, I don't, I have not done that. So, only thing there are. Uh, Many people who, have, who come to us, they start and they are running very successful. And whenever they get a doubt or whenever they get some issues with the dairy farming and all, they will approach us so that we saw, we address that, that particular point of problem. With like I said, ethnovetron. We started the ethnovetron with the help of Pune Murthy Surge. And we all, we, what we did in that case is, we knew that somewhere, because I lost two animals because of non-agriculture. 
So then I realized that the importance for to learn for me to learn. So I thought there are many, there would be many people. I we approached the true Gopal team, Gopal's in Bangalore, uh, where um, uh, so there would be good research people for us to take do a talk and go and all. So now we approached them on the search group to him, and we educated around four hundred people through WhatsApp or Zoom meeting regarding some simple remedies for the diseases and count. So that group is sharing their numbers, sharing the. the Problems the group itself and they are getting solution for the cow to develop or for who is uh, who have faced the problem or so this we have I have answered I can take this credit yes this is this was my thought I have answered it but I cannot take entire day all the very problems uh, uh, in the group and then uh, along with this we have addressed many problems for uh, many actors uh, help many farmers to get the grasses from different sources uh, by nearby them. Otherwise, they would have spent more money approaching the far off places, or they would not been able to get quality seeds and all. So, in that case, uh, honestly, very few people who I have started from the scrap and uh, help them to do that. But uh, many farmers uh, who have done uh, from one animal to uh, like many few animals, wherein they have started dairy and they are very successful. Okay. Our next question is. What's the smallest dairy one can start? Okay, smallest dairy uh, it is two way. Like I have other profession and want to have a dairy for my own sake. One animal is the smallest, and I'm a farmer and I want this animal in symbiotic relationship with the farming practices. Then one or two animals would be good idea. Uh, wherein because we get a feed fodder or waste farm waste in the farm that is be thrown away or burnt which can be used as a resource by resources by feeding to these animals so one or two would be good uh, right number for someone a farmer and want to have a subsidiary activity as in uh, the extra income source and also in relation a uh, symbiotic relationship with this cow uh, sorry farm but if you want to have a only dairy farm and it's the smallest uh, number if you want to know. It would be five to ten would be the smallest number with few managing. And again, if your labor manages and you just want a profit out of it and you don't have any other profession to back up your expenses, it's quite difficult to run your profitable enterprises with five or even ten months. Okay. So, uh, your labor also spent on that. So five or ten months would be the right number to start the minimum dairy. Economically viable. Okay. And next question is Is keeping days, desi cows and selling their milk a financially viable option? Yes. Uh, see, obviously, it's like 100% is uh, viable. Only thing, uh, see, uh, oh, okay, I quote an example here. Um, so now, only thing we need, there's a niche market for this animal, this milk also. And the quality, quantity available is also very less. Only thing we, we don't know that Amrit is in our hand and we are not able to sell it. Uh, only thing we need to educate. So say, I said during my talk also, we need to learn the selling skills and we do not, we not educate to sell our cow. People with the indigenous cow make ghee and sell it 5,000 rupees, 4,000 rupees, even 2,000 rupees they are able to sell it. And milk in uh, metros like Hyderabad, Bangalore and even Delhi, people they sell it for 60, 70 rupees. Forget this, the best example is there are people who buy water at 600, 700 rupees saying that it's all the time. It's black water or white water, something like that. It's uh, from Gangas or Manasarora and all. So when they can pack the pre level water and sell it 600, 700 rupees, it's to the reach customer. We are not selling uh, milk in that way, in that category. We are selling in upper class and we are mid class also. If you talk to them and the importance of it, the health point of family, child, children in their houses. Obviously, people would prefer to buy desi cow at 60, 70 rupees liter instead of 40 rupees or 50 rupees buffalo milk. But then the market situation is different. Fat based on the buffalo milk is sold at a higher rate than the cow milk. Because we are not knowing what, why we need to drink milk and what quality of milk and what quantity of milk is good for what purposes. So as a seller, I need to educate this uh, to the people and sell it. So yeah, when I have problems, I sell it 70 rupees. I don't get the number of milk. But the people in Gulbarga sell it 70 rupees, which if, if they try in a very professional way, still they can take it 100 rupees per week also. So then obviously, running, having a dairy with indigenous cow 
even less liter of milk per minute is also viable for energy delivery. Okay. Now I'll take up some questions from the participants in Zoom. Uh, first question can be asked by Manvita. Your hand is raised. You can ask. You are in mute. Please unmute yourself first. Manvita. Okay. Uh, any other participants? You can unmute yourself, please, and you can ask the questions. Anil Kumar Nagradi, Prashant Biradar. Shiva Kumar, Sachin okay. Savant. Participants, you don't have any questions? No. Hello. Okay, they must let them not behind. If you're not able to uh, speak from your mics, you can post your questions in the chat box. Okay, ma'am. Any other questions from your audience? Yeah, I'm just waiting. We'll wait for another few seconds, then we'll end. Okay. Okay, participants, I think uh, uh, you don't have any, any, any more questions. So now we have come to end of question round. On uh, behalf of agricultureinformation.com, we like to thank uh, Mr. Malina Themadi for a very detailed talk. And we also like to thank all the participants for joining this meeting. The meeting will now be closed. Thank you, Mr. Malinath. Thank you. You're most welcome, sir. Thank you.